Okay, welcome back. Once again, this is John, John Z. Hodgson, um, doing the long hammer editor tutorial. For this tutorial, I'd like to talk some about triggers and um, event handling. That is going to be extremely important for a real workable map. Any game function, uh, well, the functions that will run your map, like your win and loss conditions, and uh, what happens when players enter certain areas or certain events happen. Um, a cause and effect kind of relationship between objects is all handled um, through events and uh, triggers, is what Hammer calls them. So for example, you're going to need a trigger to do things like what happens when a player steps on the, um, uh, the capture point in a King of the Hill map. Well, it's going to start capturing the point, assuming. Or what happens when a player nears a door. And those are some things that we're going to talk about, um, this cause and effect kind of handling. So I'd like to start with a really simple trigger about how a, um, how a uh, resupply locker works. So go into Entities, and then go find Prop Dynamic. And then stick one on a wall where you'd like the um, respawn or the resupply locker to be. Right click and bring up properties. World model. Um, locker. So here's the resupply locker. Don't pick the uniform locker. Grab that. Um, disable shadows. What else? That's about it. Disable receiving shadows is fine also. Well, no. We'll figure it out how it looks. Hit apply. Now we've got a resupply locker. Um, yeah, make that make sense. Set it down on the ground here. And turn it. Yeah, let's just pull up a uh, rotate. 90 degrees. There we go. Okay. So there's our resupply locker. Now, right now, it just doesn't do anything other than sit there, and it waits for input to happen. Uh, let's give it... I forgot to give it a name, because we need to talk to it. We need to reference it somehow. Uh, how about blue resupply? Apply. So now we've called this prop, prop blue resupply. Okay, now we need to make a trigger that will recognize when a player is near that resupply locker and it needs to open up and give people stuff. Go into browse in your texture groups and then type in trigger. This will give you one of the special, uh, it's this one right here, the orange one, a special uh, type of um, texture that's invisible in-game as long, well, it, yeah, it's going to be invisible in-game for our purposes. So build your brush so that it overlaps the whole, um, the whole resupply locker and extends out a little bit so the players don't have to nudge up against it too much. And then hit enter, and now we've got our little trigger brush right here. So we're going to try now tying a brush to an entity. Like I explained before, usually in Hammer, you're either a brush or a non-brush entity. Brushes. Um, they block player's view, they block player movement, and they do other things um, that I'll talk about a little bit later when it comes to optimization um, for drawing distances and, uh, and seeing what the player can see and uh, determining things like that. And if you're not one of those, then you're an entity. But you can always make brushes entities and give them entity properties, and that's what we're going to do right here. So right click, or uh, yeah. Right click on the brush, the trigger, and then select tie to entity. Now we can make this brush one of any, 
any of these entities right here. They are called brush entities later, and we'll get to that in a minute. Type in um, funk regenerate, and there it is right there, and hit apply. So funk regenerate is a type, a special type of uh, um, entity. That means whenever a player comes within that trigger zone, whenever a player is within the bounds of that brush, then it will replenish all his health and ammo, and uh, usually tell a uh, nearby resupply, lock resupply locker to open up and do that kind of animation thing, as if somebody had opened up the locker. Um, if you play Team Fortress 2, you know what I'm talking about. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this... Um, this uh, Funk Regenerate function here is only available for Team Fortress 2. Now I'm not 100% sure. So you can give this a name if you like. Blue Resupply Trigger. You'll want to name these things that they make sense. The team that it's associated with, who's gonna, who can uh, access that Resupply Locker. I'm going to say Blue. Start Disabled No and associated model, the prop dynamic that represents this zone in the world. The associated model should have appropriate open and close animation when the player interacts with this zone. It just so happens that our resupply locker has just that sort of animation. You can either type in or find the name in the drop-down box, which we named Blue Resupply. Alternatively, you can use this little eyedropper tool to select that um, prop and then we'll find the name for you. Then click apply. Now I'm going to take this whole thing and duplicate it and bring it over to the red base. Why not make things easy on myself? Rotate that, uh, set it on the floor, and change the values for this. So, red resupply, red resupply trigger, apply, apply, change this to red resupply. And uh, this will interact with the red team. So now you should have two resupply lockers, one for the red team and one for the blue team, and opposite teams cannot come in here and use that resupply locker. And that should work. Before we run our game, though, I want to do a different type of trigger, which is for doors. So let me pause this, 